Great news! The Social Security Administration, SSA, has announced a special, limited-time $3,200 direct deposit for eligible individuals. This exciting update affects those receiving Social Security, SSI, SSDI, and VA benefits, including seniors. Find out who qualifies for the $3,200 direct deposit. We'll explain the criteria so you can see if you're eligible. Learn the critical dates for this limited time offer. It's important to act quickly to ensure you don't miss out. How to receive your payment. We'll provide clear, easy to follow steps on how to ensure you get your $3,200 direct deposit. From checking your eligibility to completing the necessary forms, we've got you covered. Important contacts, get the essential contact information for the SSA and other relevant organizations. If you need additional help or have questions, knowing who to contact is crucial. Community support, join the conversation. Leave a comment below if you have questions or need more information. Our community is here to support you and provide answers. Stay updated. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. This way, you'll always be up to date with the latest news and updates from the SSA and other important financial announcements. In recent months, there's been a lot of buzz surrounding a potential $3,200 direct deposit for beneficiaries of Social Security, Supplemental Security Income, SSI, Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI, Veterans Affairs, VA, and Seniors. This substantial sum has piqued the interest of many, leading to questions about its origin, eligibility, and how to claim it. Today, we're going to unravel this complex topic, separating fact from fiction, and providing you with the information you need to understand what's really going on. Before we dive in, it's crucial to emphasize that the world of government benefits is intricate and ever-changing. While we strive to provide the most current information available, it's always wise to verify details with official sources like the Social Security Administration, the Department of Veterans Affairs, or your local government offices. Our discussion today is meant to inform, but it shouldn't replace personalized professional advice tailored to your unique situation. So let's begin by demystifying this $3,200 figure. Contrary to what some might believe, this isn't a new, single payment that's about to land in people's bank accounts. Instead, it represents the cumulative amount of several stimulus payments issued by the federal government in response to the economic hardships brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. To truly grasp the concept, we need to look at the bigger picture and understand its origins. The journey of these payments started in March 2020 with the signing of the CARES Act, which provided eligible individuals with up to $12, plus $500 for each qualifying child. This was the government's initial response to the sudden economic downturn. Then, in December 2020, another round of payments was authorized through the Consolidated Appropriations Act 2021, offering up to $600 for eligible individuals and the same amount for each qualifying child. The third and final piece of this financial puzzle came in March 2021 with the American Rescue Plan Act, which issued up to $14 for eligible individuals and each of their qualifying dependents. When we add these amounts together $1,200, $600, and $14 we arrive at our much-discussed $3,200 figure. It's the total sum of direct stimulus payments that were possible for an individual to receive throughout these three rounds of economic impact payments. But here's where things get interesting, especially for our audience of Social Security, SSI, SSDI, and VA beneficiaries, as well as seniors. These groups faced unique challenges in receiving these stimulus payments, primarily because many individuals in these categories don't typically file tax returns, as their benefits are often not taxable. This created initial hurdles in the distribution of funds since the IRS, responsible for dispersing the payments, primarily used tax return information to determine eligibility and send out the money. Recognizing this issue, the Social Security Administration, the Department of Veterans Affairs, and other agencies collaborated with the IRS to ensure that beneficiaries who didn't file tax returns could still receive their stimulus payments. They shared information to facilitate the distribution of funds based on benefit records. Despite these concerted efforts, there were numerous reported cases of delays and complications. Some beneficiaries had to wait longer than others to receive their payments, 
while others may have missed out on one or more payments due to various factors such as changes in circumstances, misunderstandings about eligibility, or issues with the distribution process. This is precisely why the topic of $3,200 direct deposits continues to be relevant, even now, well after the initial distribution of these stimulus payments. There are ongoing efforts to ensure that everyone who was eligible actually received the full amount they were entitled to. Now let's delve into who exactly might still be eligible for these funds and what actions they might need to take. The stimulus payments were designed with a broad reach, aiming to provide financial support to as many Americans as possible during the pandemic's challenging times. Social Security Retirement Beneficiaries, Supplemental Security Income, SSI, Recipients, Social Security Disability Insurance, SSDI, Beneficiaries, Veterans Affairs, VA, Beneficiaries, Railroad Retirement Board, RRB, Beneficiaries, and even seniors not receiving these benefits but meeting certain income thresholds were all intended recipients of these funds. Most individuals in these groups should have received their payments automatically, either by direct deposit, paper check, or prepaid debit card. However, various factors could have affected eligibility or the amount received. These include changes in the number of dependents, as rules around dependents changed with each round of payments, significant income fluctuations between 2018 and 2020, life events like marriages, divorces, births, or deaths in the family, and even citizenship and residency status. It's important to understand that eligibility for these payments was not means tested in the same way that some other benefits are. Receiving Social Security, SSI, SSDI, or VA benefits didn't disqualify anyone from these stimulus payments. They were additional support provided on top of regular benefits. However, despite the government's efforts to distribute these payments as widely as possible, some eligible individuals may have fallen through the cracks. Common reasons for missing out on payments include outdated information on file with the IRS, unawareness of special tools created for non-filers to claim their payments, misunderstandings about eligibility, issues with representative payees, garnishment or offset in some cases, and even system glitches or human errors given the millions of payments processed. But here's the good news. If you believe you're missing one or more of these payments, it's not too late to claim them. However, you'll need to take action. This might involve filing a tax return, even if you don't normally do so, using the IRS non-filer sign-up tool if it's still available, or seeking assistance from organizations that offer free tax help, especially for seniors and low-income individuals. These include the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, VITA, Tax Counseling for the Elderly, TCE, and AARP Foundation Tax Aid Program. You might also consider contacting the IRS directly, reviewing your bank statements for deposits you might have overlooked, or even consulting with a tax professional or elder law attorney if your situation is particularly complex. The key is not to give up it's your money and you're entitled to IT.ITS also crucial to be wary of scams during this time. Remember, the IRS will never call, text, email, or contact you on social media asking for personal or bank account information. All legitimate contacts will come through mail. If someone contacts you claiming to be from the IRS and asks for this information, it's likely a scam. As we navigate this complex landscape, it's worth noting that there have been discussions at various levels of government about additional support for beneficiaries of Social Security, SSI, SSDI, and VA programs. These discussions often stem from the recognition that these individuals are among the most financially vulnerable in our society, and that inflation and rising costs of living have eroded the purchasing power of their benefits. While no new federal stimulus payments have been approved at the time of this recording, Staying informed about potential developments is always a good idea. Now, let's turn our attention to how these payments interact with your regular benefits and some financial planning considerations. When it comes to Social Security retirement, SSDI, and VA benefits, there's good news the stimulus payments do not count as income for these programs. Receiving a stimulus payment will not reduce your benefits. For Supplemental Security Income, SSI, things are a bit more nuanced. SSI is a means-tested benefit, meaning your income and resources can affect your eligibility and benefit amount. However, the IRS has classified these stimulus payments as tax credits rather than income. As a result, 
They do not count as income for SSI purposes and are excluded from resource limits for 12 months after receipt. This is crucial because it means that receiving a stimulus payment should not reduce your SSI benefits or make you ineligible, at least not immediately. Similarly, these payments generally do not affect eligibility for programs like Medicaid or SNAP, food stamps, they're not considered income, and they're excluded as a resource for a certain period after receipt. When it comes to financial planning with these funds, consider prioritizing necessities like housing, utilities, food, and medications. If you've been putting off important medical procedures or home repairs due to cost, this might be an opportunity to address those needs. If possible, try to allocate some of the money towards starting or bolstering an emergency fund. Even a small financial cushion can provide peace of mind and help you avoid high interest debt when unexpected expenses arise. If you're carrying high interest debt, using some of the stimulus money to pay it down could save you money in the long run. However, be cautious about using all the funds for debt repayment, especially if it would leave you without any savings.